I got to be a sideline reporter for a game that LeBron James played in whenever he was in his senior year of high school. How hard is it living with someone who never sleeps? And I look up on the scoreboard and there was Moss with no shirt on. <laughs> like, I think my mom got like hit with a chair no, and a no. police walked by. Definitely the busiest I've ever been. It's okay, she already in my deals. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Ride Around Show. Today we have Danielle Muslin, First Lady of Razorback Basketball. Today we're gonna talk to her about her experience as a national news reporter and her day-to-day -day life as the wife of Eric Musselman and a community figure. Let's hop right in. Tesla. So I gotta ask, do you like cars? You know? I'm not much of a car okay. person. This, I think this is only the third time I've been in a Tesla. Like, okay. I can barely open the door. <laughs> That's cool. Are you more into, like, fashion? Like, what is your... I hobby? love fashion. Okay. Well, I actually, really do. I brought some spare hoodies to give to you. Thank so I don't know you. if you want black or white. I like the white. Okay. That's yeah. amazing. I'm gonna, give hey, I'm gonna wear this. Thank you. Right. So what? what is your favorite, like, title? Besides, it's your name. Is it I First mean, Lady of Basketball? No, I'll be I'll be honest. I am a little bit uncomfortable with First Lady of Basketball, okay. but I know that that's kind of like what people want to call me, so I just roll with that. Um, but I'm just Daniel Musselman, you know. <laughs> well, I saw on your Instagram. It said GM of the Must Bus. I feel like that's kind yeah. of that's yes. Cool. I think that's the most accurate because it's a lot more than just basketball. You know yeah. what I mean? It's we still have a family at the end of the day, and. Um, I, I feel like the general manager of that family. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's more of like a NBA term too. Yeah. He kind of, <laughs> Muscleman has a lot of like NBA roots he brings down. Yeah, really he, cool. he was in the NBA for a long time and he honestly hasn't been a college head basketball coach for that long. I believe this is going to be his eighth season, which, um, you know, not really that long considering how much basketball he's actually coached. Yeah. All right, let me pull up Instagram. See what the audience wants to know. Mm. Is the pool house stocked for the basketball season? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how how hard is it living with someone who never sleeps? Oh, it's so hard. I I will wake up like to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night during the season, and he'll be like not in the bed anymore. And then I'm like, then I feel the need to go check on him. It's bad. It's up there with his computer going. And yeah, he's like got his phone. iPad. I love that. It's bad. At least he's committed. Um, dream car, if any. You know what? I just got my dream car, and it's um, a Land Rover Defender. Okay. Oh, is that like the classic looking one? Yeah, it kind of looks like a Bronco a little bit. How do you, oh gosh, the moms on here are coming for you. Uh oh. How do you feel about Mariah driving in a couple years? Oh, <laughs> I am terrified. Absolutely terrified. I try not to even think about it. So let's talk about it more. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hardest, best and hardest parts about being in the spotlight? Um, the hardest part is uh, there's not a lot of privacy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you sometime, like time. It, yeah, with, like if the season is not going great or, you know, it's you just don't necessarily have that privacy to just go and cry alone. <laughs> you guys stay off Twitter? Yeah, we, loss of yes, it. for sure. I don't even go on. Um, the best did you say the best part too yeah. um i mean the best part i have great seats at the basketball yeah. game are you kidding me <laughs> yes and access to me yeah exactly i get people. to do fun stuff like this so i want to kind of interview on two parts as daniel Sargent, your former name when you were a news reporter <laughs> and then move into daniel Musselman and talk about you know your roles in recruiting being the gm being a mom yeah community figure all the stuff you do so former news reporter I think you worked for ESPN, Fox, mm -hmm. NFL Network. Yep. What what like got you into that? I always was a sports fan and always played sports, so I really loved sports. And then I think it was my second year in college, I realized that I was really into broadcasting. And looking back, I was always that 
kid that was doing plays and you know trying to read the announcements. So I, I had a talent for that when I was younger, but then it wasn't until I was, you know, 19 years old that I kind of put it all together and realized that I wanted to. Well, my age. Be, yeah, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Okay. That's actually kind of inspiring that you started later. Yeah, I what, didn't always know that that's what it was. That well, what would it have been destiny. before that? Oh my, you know how kids are. I think I wanted to be a veterinarian at one point, an architect at one point. <laughs> So what's one of your favorite memories um, from... Um, there's a couple. One um, is I got to be a sideline reporter for a game that LeBron James played in whenever he was in his senior year of high school. Oh, wow. And so it's really cool now looking back, you know, knowing that I interviewed him back whenever he was like 18 years old and now he's become this superstar. So that that's one that definitely stands out. Um, I also had the opportunity to work sidelines of a Super Bowl, but no one in America saw it because it was for ITV, which is a sports, well, not a sports network, but a TV channel in London. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I got hired to do that. So that was really cool. Um, and Prince was the halftime show at that one. So it made it kind of extra special. Oh, you guys see all the confetti coming Yes. Out? Do you remember who won that game? Um, no, I don't even remember who won that game. I just remember it was like pouring raining in oh. Miami. <laughs> the weather was horrible. So did you report more f like football or basketball? You know what? I never really covered the NBA at all. I, um, when I worked in local TV, I never was in a city that had an NBA team. I was in Macon, Georgia, which had no pro sports teams. I was covering high school. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Kansas City that just had the Chiefs and the Royals and an MLS team. Um, and then I went national, I worked for ESPN, but I was anchoring. So I was reading highlights for all different sports, but I wasn't out covering anything. Okay. Um, so I've been all over the place. Yeah, I was gonna ask you yeah. that too. Is it more, was it more interviewing or was it more reporting? Cause interviewing it, is like right there with them. And... Yeah, it started out, I did a little bit of everything, but then um, as I grew in my career, I, I pretty much became an anchor okay. and learned, and I guess sort of perfected the art of reading highlights, which <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> be enthusiastic. Yeah, I think that everyone makes it look so easy, but it's it's not that easy. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw you did um when you guys were in Europe. You did a little quick little interview with Mus <laughs> yeah. between games. That was funny. He never never stops letting me work. He's just always putting me to works. <laughs> well, yeah, you do. I know all your skills you got from PR and journalism. Definitely, you probably implement a lot in yes. the GM. Yes. I think the football, the basketball team has the best. PR and yeah. social media and everything. Yeah, and Musk really has a passion for it too and he really works hard at it. And it's interesting because it's something, like a lot of people don't move with the times. Mm -hmm. And you know, whenever he started out in college basketball, it, the, the social media was not the way that it is now. But he's really kind of figured out that that's what needs to happen in order to fill, fill seats and, um, and sign players and get people interested in whatever program he's coaching and so he was just able to just keep learning and keep uh, just expanding his reach and what he does and um, I definitely would think I help a little bit with that but people think I'm like the main mastermind behind that oh, which I'm put not. The pieces together I mean I would <laughs> think so too because I'm like you know the team with the best um, recruiting social media presence has a yeah. former news no. anchor behind this. No, I definitely help, but I I joke and I say I'm more the person that is telling him not to put stuff out there. Like I feel like oh. I'm more like the guard. I'm like, no, don't put that out there. <laughs> Just more agent PR yeah. analyst. And then I have a quitting time. Like I turn my phone off every night at nine o'clock and good. he hates doing that. He oh, hates really? it. Yeah, so he'll still be like trying to do stuff on Twitter. I'm like time to shut it down yeah, i think i saw some report when he moved up here before y'all got a house he would like walk up and down college not college but the strip right here oh for and sure just do phone calls and stuff like, that would be hilarious for I sure i watching at like 1 a.m just on the phone like, yeah <laughs> just talking to a recruit so are you coming or not yeah, exactly when it comes to recruiting i mean i just am kind of myself so i just try to be there you know what i mean be there to meet our recruits meet their parents um, just help welcome them to Fayetteville mm -hmm. and answer any questions I always go in and I say I'm here to answer any questions that are not basketball related <laughs> so 
you know, people want to know about the city or just anything. I just try to be that person. And some people will have a ton of questions and some people won't have any questions, but I just want to be that person. That's a big part of it. No, I've talked talking to other coaches' wives. I didn't realize how important that factor was of players meeting the wife. Yeah. They know the coach is gonna coach, but right. it kinda makes them feel more at home. They know yeah. the family. And just more comfortable that I'm someone that they can call if they you know I'm like, I will go knock on your son's door <laughs> at yeah. midnight if you need me to. I'm here for it. I bet the players love that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had to do that now. That's but <laughs> I saw a quote on one of the videos. I wrote it down and set up. Great job, Eric, on recruiting a five-star wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Who's the most memorable person you've interviewed? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's actually recently I had the opportunity to interview Venus Williams. Okay. And it was, you were there. She was so incredible. And you know, someone like her, I mean, she just transcends sports. She's such an icon and she showed up without an entourage, was just so cool, so comfortable and so funny. What's your morning routine? Press snooze at least twice. (laughs) Like I didn't, you know, I thought 45 minutes with the, with the person that can it can go, you know, one of two ways, and she really made it easy on me and was so open. Um, and I mean, you see why she's such a winner and such a champion. Do you know how to call the hogs? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn. You're, you have a very unique role just because a lot of coaches' wives don't have the ex- background you Right, do, yeah. Kind of crazy. No, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely different than the majority of people. And so I, I mean, I sometimes laugh whenever I think of some of the things that I'm doing. And, you know, I was uh, the in-stadium host for a football game last year. I was the host for our red-white game last year. And I know that's definitely not normal for a coach's wife to be, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. around there doing that. But I think that it's so cool. And it's for me, it's fun. You know, it kind of gives me a chance to use some of my broadcasting yeah. skills and just have fun with it. Um, so it's, I think it's awesome. I, I love too. doing I it. It's, it's, it's intriguing. For, you know, it's kind of inspiring for me because I'm, I'm a person that likes to be multifaceted. Yeah. And a lot of people say you just to pick one, but you do a lot of stuff. No, so you like can that. always have your hands in as many things as you have time for. Yeah, for sure. Time management is key. Yes. In life. I, I consider myself to be retired from, okay. you know, real broadcasting. And so you think, okay, I probably will never get to interview an amazing guest again because that's over. And then here this popped up and I interviewed perhaps the most amazing guest that I've ever interviewed. So, um, you know, never count yourself out, never stop dreaming, never stop striving to do big things. I like that. Do you ever come out on Dixon Street? doesn't really. Not very often, yeah, but I really was easy. not my scene. I, but I was at Farrell's last night for a little event. So okay. once in a while, I get out here. I'm way too fine to be this stress, yeah. Oh, I'm not the girl I was or you still be. Oh, I might be better. So we'll move on to Daniel Musselman. Your okay. current life. Busy. Is it? Is okay. Is this the busiest you've ever been? Or I feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like it because um, it's easy for me to take on too much. Hard for me to say no. Yeah. So definitely the busiest I've ever been. Well, thank you for coming on here. Yes. No, I'm <laughs> glad to. You got me at a great time. Oh, and basketball season starting. I'm yes. excited. How do you think we'll be different this year? Well, the fact that we have six freshmen is the main difference on this team. You know, we definitely have had older teams here at Arkansas. And even for Eric's four years when he was at University of Nevada, definitely a lot of older players. And so, um, you know, it might be some growing pains early on because a lot of these kids on our team, they've never played at this level. And I think it's going to be, um, you know, a little bit of a wake up call for sure. I don't think that they know what to expect. I think the red and white game was good. Yeah. The red and white game was good. Our exhibition games will be really yeah. good. Be We're going to play Texas. Yes. I'm definitely going to go to all of them. Um, I think Texas will be the biggest, uh, I wish I you know, it. real life test for them and they'll kind of see, oh, this yeah. is what college basketball is all about. The freshmen are having to adjust very yeah. <laughs> quickly, emotionally and basketball wise. For sure, for sure. I mean, and that's, it's normal. You know what I mean? It's it's very, very normal. Yeah. I tell Kamani all the time, we're young, be patient. 
conversation with us because I'm a freshman. Yeah. And so he'll be like, people are losing their minds today. And I'm like, we're young. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, just last year you were at your mom's house, yeah. you know? We're going to go through changes besides just basketball. It's just funny, though. But everybody's close. That's the most important part. Yeah. They no, and uh, great friends. kids and... Um, you know, I'm proud to have them on our team. We just consider them to be part of our family. And and I look at all of them like I've got 15 sons, yeah. you know? Yeah, so you kind of, that's kind of like one of your roles of the team is like hosting events and kind of yeah. being the momager of the team. I think the entire team is going to be in town um, for Thanksgiving. And so we're going to host a huge Thanksgiving here. So that's kind of my goal to have everything done by Thanksgiving. Yeah, totally. We just, we like to have open door. Like if they want to come over and have dinner, or if they, you know, if they need a break, they want to get out of their apartment. We just want that to be that place that they can. So I watched some of your interviews and never shot in your house. Yeah. Some of the local news stations, but pulling up, I was like, oh, it goes back. <laughs> Okay. Definitely the best house that we've ever lived in in our entire lives. Yeah. How long what, were y'all at Nevada? We were there for four years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he's coming up on his eighth year. Yeah. Goes fast. I look back on pictures of Mariah whenever we first got here and she was like this small and now she's like five foot five. It's crazy. Yeah, she has a little entourage. I saw at the game. <laughs> she <funny>. does. <laughs> She does. What did you think at the first game in Bud? Because I know it's one of the biggest. It's humongous is what I thought. Um, I know the first year it wasn't as packed as mm -hmm. what it is now. No, not COVID, but just, you know, new coach, mm -hmm. new team. And I just, I don't think people, it, it wasn't a sold out arena. People were not quite as excited as they are now. So, I mean, I don't remember my initial thoughts of that, but whenever I think of games, like I look at like year. last year, yeah. It was the most exciting college basketball game. I mean, some of those, the Auburn game, the Kentucky game, the LSU game too, honestly, it, those are memories that I'll be talking about when I'm 75. Like, remember that Auburn game? That was crazy with the, did y'all get like, were y'all in there or did you kind of Oh, we out? got, we were sitting courtside and my mom was with me and Mariah. So we were trying to stay out of all of the mess, but we got like, we were right. We were right in front of the student section. Oh, they trampled. and so they were like trampling. Like I think my mom got like hit with a chair, no, and a no. police walked by, and I was like, I grabbed the police officer, and I was like, Can you get us out of here? And so we kind of followed him, and we got into the tunnel where we could be in a little yeah. bit of safer location. The tunnel where Musk took off his shirt. And no, not scored. that tunnel. Oh, okay. We were in that tunnel, and all of a sudden I look up on the scoreboard, and there was Musk with no shirt on. <laughs> And I, you know, he had the shoulder injury, so I was just like, <gasps> like, I didn't know he had found some help to protect yeah. his shoulder. I was just like, we do not need to hurt the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Auburn's just going to be upset this year. I don't know. I don't know. Because I saw, I, oh, I had to watch the tape back like 20 times to see that the dude actually tried to like swing at Devo <laughs> after he, after he got him. After he dunked on him? Yeah. That's I didn't, funny. I didn't know that, but he like... I think if the, they wouldn't have rushed the court, that they would have been a little. It would have been a little. Because he like tried up. to swing, and then there was like people running in front of him. I was like, <laughs> thank goodness. That was crazy. So must must seem kind of a little because I'm very particular. Must seems type A like that. Too. Oh yeah, he, most coaches are. Okay. Like everywhere I've gone, like they're always like that. Majority of them, he definitely is like that. Extremely organized. Work. Extremely play. particular. Yes, for sure. Is he like that at home too? Or Yes, yes. Ask my daughter how she feel, how he feels about her messy room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Growing pains. Yeah. How often, so how often are you over here just in the, in the... On a weekly basis, yeah. There's no like schedule necessarily, but I would definitely say on a weekly basis. And if it's a week where I don't have anything that I'm over here doing work-wise, then I usually at least try to pop over and catch a little bit of practice. Um, just to kind of check in. How you handle being, um, you know, an influential woman and a public figure and a mom and the role with the team and just all of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely, um, I would say it's a delicate balance. You know what I mean? Um, just because you only have time for so much. And I think especially as women, we 
are constantly feeling bad about like what we didn't get to do. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's, it's just, I try to balance everything. I try to give myself grace if I can't be at something, you know, there's games that I'm going to have to miss of Eric's because I have to do something with Mariah or because I have a prior commitment. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff that I do in the community that takes up my time, you know, whenever Eric's home or Mariah's home or needs a ride. And so I, I try to limit that as much as I can because as a family, we don't get that much time together. So like if it's that few hours, whenever we all get together, then I don't want to be running off and doing something. So it's just, you know, a lot of planning and balance just so that everything gets some attention and not beating myself too much beating myself up too much whenever I don't get to do something that I want to or somebody needs me to. So one of the friends I know you're really close with is Mandy Hunt. How did y'all meet? She seems like she matches your energy well and you guys are a good pair. So. She is amazing. We met through another friend um, that's also named Mandy okay. and uh, just got to know each other and realized that we have so much in common and she loves basketball as much as I do. She might love it more than I do. Um, and we just have so much fun together and she is just um, such a positive person and those are the people that you kind of need in your life whenever you're going through the stressful basketball season and other things and um, I, I mean she is just she's honestly like a beacon of light in my life. I adore her and I I'm so excited every time we are, you know, together at the games and she's just, she's a great person. And we just have so much fun together. We laugh all, all the time. All of my close friends are people that like to laugh and have yeah. fun. And that is, that's what we do. Maybe Danielle and I can do the score side. Well, it's also a good pair because she's also someone that likes to look after the basketball guys. Yes. Kind of likes to be another mom. Yes. Teacher, so she's, she is. She's so funny. They tell her more stuff than they tell like their own moms and me. She's, <laughs> she gets everything yeah. out of them. She likes to be hip, I guess is what she would probably yeah. say. But <laughs> she, I, I asked her the other day at the, the red and white game, I was like, do you have a stylist? Because she's wearing like streetwear that I go by. I'm yes. Like, that's hilarious. She's and that's like, another me? thing that we have in common. We both love shopping. Yeah. So all right, yeah. let's wrap it up with the music section. You sent me some songs. Yes. It reminds me of like, a 90s or early 2000s action movie. <laughs> I feel like uh, like co that cops movie with like Eddie Murphy, like there'd be yes. like a helicopter coming down. Right, Absolutely. Like, get away police chase. <laughs> did you learn this song? Yeah, the first, the first half. We'll do the first first. Okay. This is the jam for all the fellas. It's time to do what those ladies tell us. Shut down, but you're overzealous. Play hard and get females get jealous. Okay, smarty, go to a party. Girls are standing for the crowd. It's all body. A chick walks by, you wish you could say so, but you're standing on the wall like you was born in Dexter. Next day's function, high class function. Who is serving your stroke home function? I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm a 100% that bitch. Even when I'm crying crazy, yeah, I got boy problems. That's a human in me. Bling, bling, and I saw the mess that got us in me.
you know, never count yourself out. Never stop dreaming. Never stop striving to do big things. I don't play these games with your feelings. Lizzo hit six for five though. She's not like so fly. Like I, I, I.